For over 130 years, our culture of innovation has shaped the lives of millions. Building better, brighter, and happier lives full of color and opportunities. It all stands from breakthrough research meticulously developed by leading scientists and chemists at our world-leading facilities. We're all part of a diverse family who, together, make Nippon Paint Asia's number one paint and coatings manufacturer, offering a complete paint and coating solution for total peace of mind. We're a Pan-Asian family unified and driven by our Lean for Growth culture of vigilance, insatiable appetite, teamwork, agility, leanness, stamina, allowing us to lead from the front of the pack. Corporate responsibility is ingrained in our DNA, promoting sustainability and developing skills, because people have always been at the heart of our company. Together, we strive for a sustainable business that positively impacts lives. Our ingenuity flows through every drop of the billion liters of paint and coatings we produce every year. Adding color to all the industries we supply through strong distribution and in turn enriched the lives of millions around the world. We continue to set new standards in coatings for motor vehicles. Our protective coatings sustain and enhance the performance of bridges, ships, fuel pipes, and chemical tanks. By offering developers and architects a variety of highly durable and weather-resistant options, we make it possible to realize their ambitions. And for our consumers, we strive to deliver the best end-to-end -end solutions, including design services to perfectly complement our products. We are Nippon Paint. We harness the brilliance of innovation. We inspire the lives of millions now and for decades to come. First introduced in 2008, the Asia Young Designer Awards or AYDA is part of Nippon Paint's commitment to helping nurture the next generation of architectural and interior design talents. The program aims to help designers of the future develop both technical skills and empathic design capacity through cross-learning and networking opportunities with key industry players. AYDA is more than just a competition platform. Exposure from the AYDA program enables participants to gain practical industry knowledge experience through intensive coaching, mentoring and skill building sessions by experienced educators and industry leaders. Thus further establishing AYDA as a unique platform for designers of the future. Thirteen years in the making, AYDA has grown to be one of Asia's largest and longest running award across 15 geographical locations, reaching out to more than a thousand international educational institutions and more than 150,000 students across Asia. With the help of our partners, industry associations and stakeholders, 
AYDA has received more than 35,000 entries since its conception. Let's look forward to which million dollar design that will help our finalists land the title of the Asia Young Designer of the Year accompanied by prizes worth more than 10,000 US dollars and an all expenses paid six weeks discovery design program at the Harvard University's Graduate School of Design. Who will be crowned as the Asia Young Designer of the Year? A very good morning and afternoon to everyone. Welcome to Ida X Harvard University Graduate School of Design's webinar. Today we, we have Sebastian and Gia from Harvard GSD to share more about ideas, tools, and techniques of design with the design discovery. Now, before we start, I would love to emphasize on the intention of Nipsey, the Nipsey Group, Nippon Paint as a brand, and Ida's intention to really cultivate designers who are socially responsible across Asia. And with that, we can't achieve it alone. And we're really grateful that we have a long-term collaboration and partnership with Harvard, where we send um, scholars through the Genes Tukay Obata Fellowship to, uh, to Harvard Graduate School of Design. And we also send our past year winners to the Design Discovery Program. So a lot of people know the, D, the Design Discovery Program at a surface level, but today we get its flies and dives and dive deeper into the minds and experience of what the Design Discovery Program truly is about. First, I have Sebastian on the line and also Gia, we'll go to Gia in a bit. Sebastian, based on your experience working in Asia, particularly in um, Japan for many years, and now you're leading program development in Harvard, uh, the Harvard Graduate School of Design. Can you tell us more about your insights and what are the, some of the gaps that you have identified um, in the design industry, particularly that educators like us can help solve? I'll pass the floor to you, Sebastian. Thank you, Brandon. That's a great and a big question, I will say. Um, and before I answer it, I just want to say thank you again for inviting us and having us join you today. It's a real pleasure to be here and we're really excited to be part of the conversation. So thank you again and for setting all of this up. So, you know, I first lived in Japan during college and I have to say it really broadened my horizon at the time in terms of cultural differences around the world. I lived in, I grew up in Germany, but then lived in New Zealand after high school, but as you but as you know, New Zealand society is one that's really shaped by the history of European colonialism. So from a cultural standpoint, it was a very different experience, you know, from then living in Japan later in college. And, you know, in the middle of the differences that I experienced in this new cultural environment that I was um, living in, I also saw that there were things that really connected us and still connect us all over the world in terms of global challenges such as climate change. And I think what makes the Harvard uh, Graduate School of Design a really special place, and this is true for Harvard University at large, is the fact that it's really and truly a global community. So as an educational institution, Harvard operates really on a global scale. And I think it's a terrific environment for anyone who's interested in making global connections and thinking about those global challenges. Um, because as a design school, having access to this wide ranging network of collaborators and participants, and of course, the student staff and faculty that work and study at Harvard 
it allows us to tie our design thinking into global discourses that we all have to face together. And I think that's something that really sets it apart. And I think it's an opportunity at, for, for the institution. It's an opportunity to really bring the world together in thinking about the issues that we face together. Thank you so much, Sebastian, for that quick Absolutely. share um, to a big question. I think just to um, reiterate what you think, is, I think it's the ability to think global. And it's the ability to bring people together that really makes um, the, the GSE, uh, the Harvard University at large, um, you know, um, Harvard today that we know. And just curious, because I know that um, you've been working a lot on uh, projects or research about history. So for young designers out there, why is it important for young architects and designers to learn how to appreciate history? You know, just, just I'm curious because I, I did terrible as a student <laughs> learning about history. So I'm just wondering, you know, what, what have I missed out? Yeah, just from your perspective <laughs> as an expert in the field. Right. Maybe we should have some calls soon and we can do some catch up work together. Definitely. Um, you know, so it, I love this question, Brandon, about the importance of history in the United States. It's actually a requirement and many other places, too, for architecture programs to have history components. And I think it's a really important requirement because, first of all, it's obviously important for designers to know a little bit about what people have done before them that's that's a relatively straightforward reason you know for studying historical precedent but the other thing is that history isn't just about the past and what happened in the past but it really it tells us how we see the world because how we write our history has a lot to do with how we see our present and how we want our future to look like too and so it's you know design just like history starts with looking at the world because if you're trying to make an impact if you're trying to design if you're trying to make changes to the world you have to first understand the world and you have to understand how it came to be and how it came to look the way that it does and i think that's where history is really really crucial and important because um it in that way it connects the mission um, of the gsd which is to make a more resilient, just, and beautiful world with the work of design, which has the same idea of history at its core, of trying to understand the world around us and then making an impact um, for a better future for it. Definitely. I think that resonates very strongly with um, Ida's vision um, in, in cultivating designers who can design um, for the future, because I think when you have an architectural or no man built structure, it's there and it transcends across not just one generation, but multiple generations. And that's mm -hmm. what we, we really hope, um, you know, our collaboration and journey with Harvard GSD and the Design Discovery Program can really prolong and really emphasize on the whole sustainability factor in the, the works that we do in design. That's great. So that ties into my next um, spectrum of question. I don't, I don't think it's a question. It's more like I know that the Design Discovery Program has been around for many years. And I also know that you are expanding on the digital um, side of things. So how do you see this um, helpful to help grow the design scene in Asia? Yeah, because I know COVID is a challenge. I know traveling could be a challenge potentially. So this is where um, I leave it to you and Jia to show us the magic of the Design Discovery Program. Yes, Sebastian, yes. Well, I will say that Gia will be the one who's really going to show you the magic of the program because she went through it and she is a designer and her work is stunning, so you can be excited for that. Um, but I will say that Design Discovery um, has been around since the 1970s. So as you said, it's a very old and long-standing program that has seen so many generations of students coming from all over the world to the GSD in the summer. Now, we had been wanting to offer an online design immersion program like this for some time. So there were already conversations about this. And of course, with the situation that we have with the COVID-19 pandemic, it has sped up some of these developments. So there are sometimes, those are the little moments that we might want to consider silver linings to the situation of being forced into a remote teaching and learning environment. So we are trying to make the best use of that and really learned so much from our experience of teaching 
and learning remotely this past year that we're bringing into this already longstanding and successful program. Now, what we're super excited about is the fact that being online makes this program so much more accessible to so many more people from around the world. Because as you said, it's not that easy to take six weeks off in the summer um, or four weeks in the case of this online program and you know travel uh, halfway across the world to another country, uh, secure a visa and go through all of these steps. And what design discovery really does is it's truly about discovering design. Right? So it's about understanding the tools and the techniques of design, the way that designers think, the way that designers approach problems, and what life in a design school is like. And having that opportunity to experience that before really committing to that path, I think is a really important opportunity because design as, a, as an educational program is still different, whether it's architecture, interior design, landscape, architecture, it doesn't really matter, right? It's a, it's a different experience from any other degree programs that you might be able to take at a university. Um, and so having an opportunity to experience that ahead of time, I think is really wonderful. And we are excited to be able to open this program up for a much broader participation from all over the globe and bringing people together in a truly global cohort this summer. Um, so we're really looking forward to the launch of this virtual uh, version of Design Discovery this year. Thanks for, for that sharing and, and pointing out the silver lining. Of, you know, I think there's always two sides of the coins, and that's great. So before we go into um, talking to Jia, uh, speaking to Jia about um, what the design program is, Design Discovery program is, and her personal experience and how she has transcended from just being a student and now being part of the teaching faculty at the Harvard GSV, I would love to share everyone um, a short video about of Tane Botara, the IDAS winner of 2019 and 2020, because he went to Harvard GSV for the Design Discovery Program as one of his grand prize as the international winner for the architectural category. We'll be right back. Stay tuned, everyone. So after winning the award, I knew that I was now going to Harvard for the six weeks design course, fully sponsored by Nippon. And I guess that was a dream come true moment for me. You know, it's it's Harvard. It's every architect's dream to go there and study there. It's, it's winning this award was uh, a huge thing because like my life changed with overnight. You know, I, before the award, I was just another student who was studying architecture and who, was, who had participated in AYDE. And after winning the award, you know, the it it changes completely. It it just like kind of living a celebrity life for a moment. We were now introduced to how the program would be, the models of the program, and how we would be curated in six weeks. And my fellow course mates were from all around the world aging from 18 to 15 year, 50 years old. The thoughts of designing which were coming in were, weren't just from the people who are from designing background, but there were students from medical background, music background, physics, chemistry, maths, and just name it, they are there. So uh, this, this wasn't a typical studio where all the architects are coming together and learning, but this was a kind of studio where young students are coming in and putting in their thought of what designing should be in. Throughout the program, my perception of looking to architecture, perceiving spaces completely changed. And I feel like, you know, I kind of got a little matured in terms of designing. I am kind of very happy that my journey landed me here. And in retrospect, I would like to say that, you know, kind of seize every opportunity you get because you never know, it, it just, it, it was just one task for me to apply for the competition. It completely changed my life. Participate in this competition. It's rather than competition, this is a very interesting journey of learning from others, learning from your colleagues, all the talents from all around the Asian countries, from the jury members, from the mentor sessions which happened. So I guess it's it's a wholesome design experience which Nippon has created through AYD Award and I'm super proud that I was the part of this. 
Welcome back, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the first segment where we talked a, a bit about Sebastian's um, inspiration and the Harvard GSD's goal that matches with Ida's intention, again, to cultivate designers who are socially responsible and conscious in Asia. Next on we, uh, in this segment, we actually have Jia, who attended the Design Discovery Program and now is part of the faculty at Harvard Graduate School of Design. So to Jia, what is that one thing that makes your Harvard experience so different and what keeps you going? Yeah, I'm really curious to know before we go into slicing the Design Discovery Program. Right, Brandon, I'm glad you asked that. I think one thing that makes Harvard experience so different is literally everything, um, entire field of design is at your fingertip. Um, I, I'm not exaggerating by that because not only every best designer in the world, practicing designer, architect is accessible through the GSD network, but also you have entire Harvard and MIT resources in 10 minute radius. And that's a rare experience. And I was fortunate enough to experience that in person, but I know that it's not the most accessible way to experience design for most people in the world. So that's why I'm really excited about this virtual experience because we make the experience of design education more accessible to more people. And now I'm an Irving Innovation Fellow and a Research Associate at Laffer Design Technologies. I got to experience over the past four to five years, all kinds of research labs and design studios, um, along with the best scholars in arts and sciences and business and law and medicine. It can be overwhelming, but at the same time, whatever you want to pursue as a designer and yeah. what kind of inspiration you want to pursue is at your fingertip. And I think that's a rare experience and I'm glad we can share that through the virtual program. Yeah, so that ties into one, I think one of the important component of our conversation today is we all know the design discovery program. We know what it is. We know where to apply. We know where to get it. And we do send our IDA winners over. But for us who are less fortunate at this juncture is, how, can you help us understand what is, um, what can we expect from the design discovery program? Or how can, maybe you can have a slice and you can tell us specifically in, 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 um, in, in any way that you like uh, in your experience. Um, what about the discovery, design discovery program that we can break down for people who are interested in applying to? Right, I think the word design itself can be very intimidating because it's often associated with geniuses and artists who are exceptional and bright. However, I think design is not an independent aesthetic system, but it's a method and discipline deeply ingrained in our daily life. It's part of the larger socio-technical system of history, geography, technology, and we cannot separate everyday lives and contemporary conditions of globe or Asia specifically from how we design the world and the future. So I think it's more and more important to engage in design thinking in any discipline you're coming from, whether you're a professional practicing in a corporate world or um, coming from science, law, medicine, or whatever field you're coming from, I think it's important to learn design thinking and learn that methodology. Yeah, so just to follow up, right? Um, like when, mm -hmm. we, when I spoke to Tani about his experience at the Design Discovery Program, he said throughout the six weeks, it was intense. It was powerfully packed together. And he actually got to design a civic center. So I'm just mm -hmm. wondering um, um, what is that journey like in that six weeks or four weeks for the virtual one? Um, but we can focus on the six weeks, that the one that you've attended. What mm -hmm. is that journey like? And um, so from the beginning when you are inducted to the program and in the midpoint checkpoint where you need to probably work overnight and at the end is when you harvest your, your results, right? Can you just give us a quick walkthrough of that six weeks? What can a person yes. Yeah. So I was working in uh, design and brand consulting prior to uh, design discovery program, but I didn't study uh, art studio, uh, studio art or design prior to attending. 
but I studied a uh, liberal arts program, including mathematics, economics, and anthropology. So I was familiar, but I was not a practicing designer at the time. And with design discovery, I got to learn uh, my background was actually useful in design. So first week we were introduced to visual methods and representations we can use to actually design. And to be honest, I had no idea how designers actually operate until I got to the design discovery. And five years later, now I'm a practicing designer and a uh, non-teaching faculty member as well. So uh, I think really design discovery let me and helped me di discover design in a wonderful way. And in that six week period, you're exposed to so many different parts of design, uh, technological aspects, sustainability, uh, social issues, and you really get to learn the skills and ideas that shape the field of design and how you can start thinking like a designer and practicing design as a field and a, pra a professional practice as well. Great, thank you, Jia. See, this is, the, I think that's one of the key answer I would love to hear from, from, um, from you is because I, I understand that design, again, is not just a standalone aesthetic system, but it really goes beyond that. And I really want um, students and everyone who's attending this session to really see beyond just aesthetics, but really go into context, culture, and all these values that are important to the end user, which is the human being. Mm -hmm. And how can this build structure or how can good design really enrich our lives? So that's amazing. Um, thank you. Um, so I will like to dive into my next question to both Jia and Sebastian. Um, if you can assist us, is let's say, I'm interested in applying for Harvard GSD or any program in the States or any university networks that I would like to dive into. What can I do or what can we do to prepare ourselves better? Yeah, maybe Sebastian can start first. Yes, yeah, so design discovery is a great start, I would say, um, because it's a, the wonderful thing about the program is that it's really open to anyone. We have participants who are in college and they're looking to apply to a graduate program in design. So they're really focused on developing a portfolio, for example. They're really trying to ramp up their design skills and their familiarity with certain tools and technologies. And we can do that with them and help them achieve those goals. And then we have people who may have spent 25 years working in a completely unrelated career. But to Gia's earlier point, they're realizing it's not actually unrelated because design has a place anywhere and design thinking and the methods of design have a place in other careers. So, so those participants may come and they take this experience and then they go back to their nominally non-design career, but they are able to apply some of the methods and, and sort of procedures of design. And so therefore, it's really a great opportunity for anyone from any background to come in and set their own goals for the program in terms of how they want to get acquainted with design and what they want to learn about it. And we can accommodate that. And maybe Gia is able to speak to that point um, in regards to the program specifically or in terms of preparations that she did for applying to the GSD, maybe. Yeah, thanks, Sebastian. So I will pass the baton to Jia. How did you end up from a design consultant, like, you, and then you end go, went into the design discovery program, and now you are part of the network? Can you give us some, I don't know, tips? I would say tips. Yeah. Yes, certainly. Um, this might sound cliche, but I think it's really important and foundational. Um, and that is to focus on your inner voice and interest as a first as a human and then as a designer to be. I think we've heard this before again and again, but really trying to find your own inspiration without obsessing over trying to be unique, genuinely and humbly be interested in the world and topics and knowledge will 
make you a good designer. Because as you said, Brandon, I think it is about shaping the world, the future for the end users, which are other people that you're living with. So of course you do need to show some fundamental and like foundational skill sets as a designer from uh, computation to representation using technology and also social interests, um, as well as cultural and critical thinking abilities. But this is not some foreign concept. We use this in every discipline, every day as a person in the world. Mm -hmm. So I would say having an inquisitive mind without being dogmatic is really helpful and be open and persistent with your design practice. Just observe and think how processes and objects or uh, things can be different in the world. So yeah. that would be my advice. Thank you, Jia. So I would like to resonate with both our speakers and also the Ida and Nippon Paint brand. It really is, guys, everyone who is online with us here today, I think it really is thinking beyond just design. I think that's one important point about design is that there is always, um, you are always servicing, you are always giving your best to a particular community or a particular someone out there. Who, who you want to transform their life for the better. And I think um, both the Harvard GSD Design Discovery Program, the Harvard University Network, and the IDA Network is here to support you in this journey. Like for those who are not clear with what IDA does, is we have a year-long journey across 16 geographical locations in Asia where you go into not, it's a beyond classroom experience, right? Where you get to learn to design um, um, based on the theme every year. And this year is about amplifying empathy through design. And what is empathy? It's, it's not a word that you usually learn in a design classroom, but it is a word that is very fundamentally human that I hope everyone can really take the time out to understand how do we manifest empathy as a human being. And then we can then turn it into a design framework to help deliver really, um, um, significant results in our work, you know, in the name of, of, of um, humanity and in the name of cliche, you know, sometimes you just gotta be a bit cliche. So I like to thank Sebastian and Gia for your time having this great conversation with us about design. But before we go, do you guys have anything you'd like to add on or if I missed out anything, Sebastian, Gia? It's just one thing that I was thinking of because I mentioned portfolios and we're talking about application procedures Correct. and yes. we, we always get a lot of questions and I think this might be of interest to some viewers. We get a lot of questions in terms of what, what does your portfolio have to look like? How do you have to represent mm -hmm. yourself in order to get into Harvard? And I recently did the wonderful project of interviewing a, a range of our faculty who work in admissions. And one of the things that many of them have said and echoed is that what they're really looking to see is an authentic you in your portfolio. It's not about the person that you think the school is going to like. It's about you actually representing your authentic self. And this resonates with what Gia just said, right? About your interests, about your trajectory, about your path, and about your curiosity that you have for design and, and why you want to have this be part of your life and be part of it. And having that authenticity and really asking yourself, what is it that drives you and what's the impact you want to make and how do you see the world? That's what we want to know about. Because it's about, it goes back to what, what we talked about in the beginning, right? How design is about understanding the world around us and then shaping it. it it's, that's what we want to know from applicants too. It's how do you see the world and how do you want to shape it? Yeah, thank you, Sebastian. Let me just break it down a little bit further from Sebastian. Mm -hmm. I know the word you is very hard to locate because there's no physical spot like where, where I am. But I think it's a journey, guys, especially if you are a budding designer, if you are a young designer, that one advice I would give you as an educator and, and, and as someone who's very interested in design as well is you really need to go out, do more and see more in order to find who you truly are. There are too many no voices in our heads. You just need to identify which one is the true inner voice that you want to listen to. And from there, 
your design journey will come into place and it will everything will fall into place. Trust me, it's going to take a bit of time, take a bit of effort. That's why we're all here to help you. You're not alone in this journey. Um, so I would just really like to thank Sebastian and Jia again to have this exciting conversation, short but concise and to the point, you know, just to really prepare us for the Design Super program and prepare us for the IDA journey. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much for your time. I look forward to having you guys again, maybe to talk about history, talk about design thinking, talk about inspiration, maybe talk, talk about inner voice. So on behalf of Nippon Payne and Aida, I would like to thank everyone for this session. And for those who are online, if you have questions for our speakers, you can pop it in our chat box and we'll collect it and we'll respond to you on our social media platform. I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much. Again, a big round of applause to Sebastian and Jia and the Harvard, graduates, uh, Harvard University Graduate School of Design. Thank you, everyone.